He does unpeated whiskey and do a little bit more. is a seven-year-old Bunahaven by Signatory. This is my favorite Signatory I have owned for probably four or five years. Bunahaven, as many of you know, is my favorite Isla distillery. This expression definitely, even though it's from my favorite distillery, I was kind of hesitant to purchase it on a whim because there was a few other things I wanted, but I took a look at it and what struck me was something that would normally deter people from buying it, and that was the color. If you take a look, this has the consistency of lemon water or maybe simple syrup. It's probably the lightest whiskey I have ever owned. And other than light whiskey or white dog, this is probably the lightest whiskey I've ever drank, especially considering it's aged seven years in one refill butt, which is probably very, very, very heavily refilled many, many, many times over. So again, at face value, this is probably something that most even connoisseurs of Bunahaven would pass over, but that's kind of what, after I thought about it, drew me towards it. I'm thinking, okay, well, they bottled this in a refill, but it's that light at seven years old. I've had four year olds that are darker than that. And so I'm like, okay, well, I'll take a chance on it. And I was very, very pleasantly surprised. Seven years old, distilled on January 23rd, 2008, and bottled on July 31st of 2015. Cast number 128. Bottle number 640. Boonhoven, as many of you know, is a distillery that generally does unpeated whiskey and do a little bit more. They generally distill unpeated whiskey, which makes them very unique for an Isla distillery. They do some peated versions, however, most of what they do that's peated gets into the independently bottled market. And so you'll see, as this one states, moin heavily peated, which means very, very heavily peated. If I'm not mistaken, I was under the impression from the rep at JVS, which distributes Signatory, that this was peated to about 45 to 50 ppm. I could be mistaken on that, but I think it was around that. So heavily peated more so than the usual suspects on Isla. I, I of course couldn't have a sample of it, but she really, really spoke highly about it and said, well, you love peat, you should love this. And I figured I'd give it a try. Soon sorry, as always, non-chill filtered, natural color. My absolute favorite signatory for good reason. This is the perfect example of why a whiskey that has a color like this, you should never, never like you should never judge a book by its cover, never judge a whiskey by its color, ever. This is the perfect reason. I've had whiskeys three times this age, over well over 21 years old, with not even half the character this whiskey has. Right when you pour it, it's like you're smelling the ocean. <clears throat> Literally, ocean water. Uh, savory, sour, salted, very, very, the, the saltiest single malt I've ever tasted. And Boonhaven is known for salty single malts, especially the old school Boonhavens. This one though, it's the biggest maritime saltiest nose ever. I mean, it's like ocean water spilled into the cask when this was aging. And being a refill butt, it probably was sherry, but I mean, maybe a fino sherry butt. Again, used many, many times over for it to have this color after seven years is means it was pretty tired. However, that is, I think, a good thing because it really lets the spirit show through and really shows what Bunahaven can look like in a peated form. It's like a well-seasoned barbecue pit with charred, meaty um, grizzle still on the grill. Like after uh, the day after, you smell like a, a barbecue that you used the day before. Grilled meats, sooty, there's some lemon flesh, pestled sea salt. I mean, the, the maritime peat's fighting for dominance, but there's a squeeze of lemon in there, and it's just the salt peat, salt peat. 
Crushed cherry sweet tarts is something I get too. So it's not a very confectionery candy, but it's more of a light powdery cherry note. So not like a fresh fruit cherry note. Definitely Flintstones, Kids Vitamins. It's just got this powderiness to it as well. Not that iodine heavy peat that you would normally get or the TCP, again, Band-Aid peat. Very, very just uh, ocean fresh peat. It's like the peat was taken from the shores of an ocean and not a bog. Truly phenomenal. And the palette, full bodied, rich, oily. This is the oiliest whiskey I have ever drank, period. It's as if someone put gum arabic in this. The thickening agent used for like gum syrup. For those of you mixologists or bartenders, you know what I'm talking about. It makes like simple syrup really, really thick. It's like they put that in this whiskey. I mean, dense, probably the best combination of smooth and peat um, you could come across. Bourbony Kentucky creamy notes are in there, which is interesting being that I don't think this is a bourbon, but don't, I mean, I know it's not a bourbon barrel, but I don't think there are any staves from a bourbon barrel used in this. Sweet vanilla cream butter, definitely kelp on the palate. There's more lemon from the nose, which comes back around. It's velvety overall, like a velvety dankness peat smoke. Tendril just billowing out. Again, oily, oily, oily. It's got this sharp nip of uh, house spirit in it. So the new make spirit, if you will. And I, that's obviously a testament to the fact that this is a very tired butt that was used. So it's really, even after seven years, the spirit is coming through and not this enormous cask influence. Very, very peppery too. And that goes right into the finish. Long, but very delicate. It's oily on and on. Quiets down, again, being delicate, but the peat embers just burn on and on. Dank herbs, resiny marijuana. For those of you who know marijuana, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, wet vegetation, vanilla cream, lemon meringue, like on a lemon meringue pie, just the, the meringue. Seashells picked freshly off of an ocean, if you've ever done that and smelled them. Maritime qualities into the finish. I mean, still going on and on right now. Sooty barbecue notes show up one last time. There's a little kerosene and fire pit ember even, like what kerosene smells like. It's like coated the tongue. Thick, chewy, again, oily to the last moment. Uh, Buna fans will adore this expression. I wish this was more, more readily available. I actually was lucky enough to get this bottle I didn't even purchase it. I was going to purchase it, ended up picking up a, a Glen Levitt for my dad, and then I think a bottle of bourbon at the time came back and they were out. But a buddy of mine had purchased two and opened one, thought it was phenomenal, and told me all about it, said he had an extra one. So I ended up trading him a, another bottle of bourbon, I forget what, for this bottle. And so then I kept it for a couple of weeks kept what he said in the back of my mind, opened it, and was just blown away. And that's what really rushed me into my Bunahava journey. With having their 12 and 18 and a lot of their non-age statement stuff, this really just ushered me into exploring anything and everything Bunahava. For very, very good reason, I was very satisfied with this. It just, it offers you something that you rarely will find in even other Battle Hill Bunahavans that I've had that are heavily peated and even younger than this, I mean, this blows those out of the water. This is not at cast strength, and I think that's probably a good thing because had this been at cast strength, it would have gotten a little too hot because there's really no cask influence to this at all. I mean, it's tempering it just enough that it's not you know, seven-year-old new make, but it, it's truly, definitely a learning curve malt, but if any of you find this, I've actually found this online at a few shops out of state. If they can ship it and you like Bonhoeven, highly, highly, highly recommend it. Um, as this will be perfect in any single malt collector's collection. But please open it and enjoy it. Because, I mean, this is a learning experience. If not for the saltiest, oiliest dram ever. It's just a beautiful expression of what Bonhoeven did with Pete. And I'm going to leave it at that. 93.5. Currently my favorite signatory, Bonahaven.
Cheers.